Dead marine life is washing up on thousands of miles of beach on Florida's west coast. The culprit is a toxic red tide algae bloom. It's actually the worst since 2006. Typically, it goes away in spring, but this one has persisted for nine months. And meteorologist Jeff Berardelli joins me now from West Palm Beach, Florida. Jeff, what exactly is causing this bloom and why is it lasting so long? Well, first of all, any algae bloom is natural. It occurs naturally. But we've made things a lot worse because there's so much of a higher population than there used to be many years ago. And it really is caused by fertilizer runoff into the oceans, into Lake Okeechobee, uh, extra nutrients for the algae to feed on. Uh, last October, we obviously had Hurricane Irma, pushed a lot of rain onto land, and that had to be released from Lake Okeechobee, uh, both east and west, towards the east coast and west coast. Uh, so that release actually pushed nutrients into the water and that causes the algae to bloom and then fast forward to may we had a tremendous amount of rain here in palm beach county some places had four times the amount of rainfall and so the army corps of engineers has to release the water from lake o so it doesn't overflow the dam overflow the levee system and so by doing so they release all those nutrients and the algae bloom into the waterway so that's part of the reason why it's happening we have certainly made things a lot worse because of all the fertilizer uh, that we put out into the oceans i had no idea about how that works you know algae blooms are very common in florida but this particular one jeff what's so unique about it well, the problem is, is that we had so much rain in October, so much rain again in May, so we had to release so much water from Lake Okeechobee. You know, years ago, water used to flow straight down through Lake Okeechobee into the Everglades. Uh, that was the natural way. That was Mother Nature's way of cleaning it. Uh, now all the fertilizer gets trapped in Lake O. Um, as the climate warms with global warming, which is happening, uh, it adds even more energy to the mix. It's a toxic mixture of heat and fertilizer from man, nutrients, which is causing uh, all these algae blooms. And by the way, we've seen a tremendous growth in algae blooms around the world. In fact, ocean dead zones, oxygen dead zones, have gone up about four times since 1950, and that's because of the extra algae eating the oxygen, and then nothing else can live in those areas, and they have really expanded. You mentioned nothing else can live in those areas, but can you tell us a little bit more about what marine life specifically is affected? A lot. I mean, we've had a big problem with turtles. We've had at least 400 turtles that have been beached, stranded, or died because of this toxic algae bloom. Uh, there was a whale shark that uh, died along our beaches not too long ago on the west coast of Florida. Uh, it's, we're not sure exactly yet if it was red tide, but it, it probably was. Uh, a dolphin has died. 80 manatees have died. Uh, this is a disaster for the west coast of Florida and in, in some respects parts of the east coast of Florida as well because uh, that Lake O runoff uh, when they release the water from Lake O it heads towards the Stewart area and that reduces people's property values. It kills business. I mean if you're a tourist why would you want to come to the state of Florida when you have this on the beaches? And Jeff is there any indication when the algae might start to dissipate? Well, we think when the temperatures start to cool down. So, yeah, it'll happen probably in October or November. Fingers are crossed for that to happen. Uh, but it's likely to be with us as long as water temperatures are warm and conditions generally stay warm here at least through October. And is there anything that you can do in the future to sort of limit the intensity of these algae blooms? Well, Florida's working on it right now. It's taking a lot of time, but the voters passed an amendment in 2014. They basically said, Florida, we want you to buy the land to the south of Lake Okeechobee, and we want the water from Lake O to, to go where it used to go, the way that Mother Nature intended it, to go south of Lake O, be treated just to the south of Lake O, and then into the Everglades. And by the way, this is not just a pollution problem. The Everglades used to get a lot more water than it gets right now. It's been dammed up in Lake Okeechobee. Uh, many years ago, uh, Florida built a dam uh, to protect citizens. Uh, that lived around Lake Okeechobee. There was a big disaster in 1928 because of a hurricane there. And so the, the levee system is needed, but nonetheless, allowing that water to go south of Lake O, be treated, and then get sent the way it's supposed to be sent by Mother Nature down into the Everglades and eventually Florida Bay is the way to solve this problem. And right now, Florida's working on it, but it's stuck in a bureaucratic mess. Mm. You know, are there other parts of the world besides Florida who are experiencing this sort of same algae bloom? 
Yeah, I mean, algae blooms are expanding all across the world right now, a lot more than we used to have. Uh, one specific place I want to tell you about is China. You might have seen the pictures of these lakes uh, in China. They have turned blood red. And the reason for it is, uh, you know, water temperatures are much warmer. We're having heat waves all over the earth right now because of climate change, or at least in part because of climate change. Water temperatures are warmer, more algae is growing, and it's brine shrimp that are growing in these lakes that have turned the water red. We have big problems all over the earth. The earth is rebelling and we must do something about it. Just incredible images. Jeff Baradelli always ahead of the game when it comes to climate change and keeping us updated. Thank you so much for joining us, Jeff. You're welcome.